boys and girls, we are back with another episode of the King's Court, one and only. It is myself, your host, George Brown, along with Mandis Buckle. Mandis, what's up? George, this, the, the, the season's uh, winding down here. I should say the year is winding down here. There's just a handful of shows. So this is an interesting time of the year because you get a lot of a lot of new guys. Um, a lot of guys that are trying to move to the next tier. Um, a lot of up and coming guys. A lot of guys that came out of the woodwork. So this is a really interesting time of the year. You don't have a lot of Olympians competing. Um, so competition and show schedules are are an interesting topic. What do we? What do you got for us today, George? Well, first, let's recap what we had. We had three shows. Uh, the first show was the Kentucky Muscle. Uh, congratulations to Cam Harris. He won. Uh, Derek Stevenson took second place. Then we had the San Antonio Pro. Uh, congratulations to Corey Morris. He's Olympia qualified. And Rod Clark came in second. And last but not least, we had the Titans Grand Prix, where we had the one and only Stan Morrison, a.k.a. Fetty Mo. He was able to punch his ticket to the Olympia, and Antonio Smothers came in second. So that's a recap. Now let's talk about uh, multiple show weekends. Might as well. Well, so, you know, when, when we talk about multiple show weekends, this gets real interesting. This is a perfect example this weekend. You just named six guys. One of them made it to the Olympia this past year. Uh, his first time. And the rest of the guys, very few people know who they are, if anybody. Fetty Mo, uh, quite a few of you guys know them. But otherwise, these are six These are six guys that are really pretty much out of the blue. Um, I think something has to happen where maybe they limit the amount of shows per division that can that can happen on any one particular weekend because quite honestly what you get is a ridiculously watered down um a watered down perspective i don't think i don't think there's very many guys who who competed and finished in the top five would ordinarily be in a top five at, at very many shows but because there were three shows that's what you got. So now you're going to have three people qualified for the Olympia. And and maybe one of them is currently Olympia material. Again, I know they won their show, so they're qualified. But I think they have to put a cap on how many shows are in any one, one weekend um, in, in any one division. I mean, it's definitely an opportunity. Uh, I mean, I kind of see what you're saying, but... You know, you said it before, like not not many Olympians are competing. That's by choice. You know, uh, if they was to get qualified now, then it would be it could be three heavy hitter Olympians. Uh, I mean, Olympians that are, are qualified. So it's just uh, uh, I think it's kind of the norm for after Olympia. You know, you kind of take your place in and you wait for next year. But because of the new uh, changes, that changes things, you know, uh, I look at it like it's an opportunity, like I said, to get requalified. Um, you're already in shape. You might as well go a couple extra weeks. Um, you know, how can you regulate the amount of shows? I don't think that, you know, that's something that can be regulated. But I think you can take advantage um, of those shows. You can choose wisely. You know, if you, if you kind of ask around or, you know, hey, man, you know, this person's doing this show or that show, and you strategically – you know, try to put yourself in the, in the best situation to either grab some points or to get an Olympia. To me, that's the goal. You know, the goal is to get into the Olympia. The goal is to get some points. And if the opportunities are there through multiple shows in, in one weekend, then why not take advantage? Sure. From an athlete's per- perspective, I, I agree 100 percent. You you know, whether Olympians are competing right now or not, you're, you're 100 percent right. That is up to them. And and as far as non-qualified athletes, absolutely it would it would benefit them to do show weekends where there's multiple shows. 
where I think they, they might take a look at this moving forward is why couldn't you regulate? Why couldn't you say there's a limit in in any one particular country? Uh, because if we're talking about multiple shows globally, that's a little different. Um, but if you're talking about three or four shows in the United States on one weekend in one division, you get a really watered down version of of who shows up to those shows. And, and what that ultimately does is it hurts the Olympia because now you have one or two guys that are qualified that ordinarily would never be qualified for the Olympia. Yeah, but that's just this one weekend, right? right. Because when the season starts next year, mm. the regular people will be back, and then that's when it'll turn back into the real guys, and they'll fill those slots. So basically two people or three people, basically out of, uh, you know, three people technically, but two people basically got in that, you know, you could put a question mark on if they're Olympic material. But as soon as the season starts next year, the regular people will be running in those shows and it won't matter. And it's not a lot of three show weekends. But but now you got those two guys that are in. So I'm just talking about when there are three or four show weekends. Maybe I just think it's something for them to look at. If it becomes an issue moving forward, I think it's something to look at right now. Uh, maybe we don't have enough of those weekends that happen, but this past weekend certainly was one of them. And and you can see the quality was just not there. It just wasn't there. All right, so uh, moving forward, let's talk about uh, the points versus the one-year end system. What do you think about that? Well, this, this is a perfect segue from one to the other. So if we were on last year's system winning year end, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because the three guys who won would still have to earn more points. Um, would they all still qualify for the Olympia? <laughs> you know, um, so that's interesting. I think you're starting to see now the difference of the win versus your in versus, versus the points. This is a perfect weekend to now that, that, that systematic format shows you this weekend the point system would have been apps definitively better. Um, but that doesn't mean it's it's an overall better system. Uh, I think there's a few other tweaks that they might want to adjust. Again, uh, like how many shows are on any given weekend, or perhaps we might run into something later, something later on in the year where there might be a, a men's physique show in another country where they might only have seven or eight or nine athletes and the competition isn't that great. You're going to have some other people who are at the Olympia who are not Olympia material. And the win in your in was supposed to eliminate that. It's supposed to say you have to be good enough to win a show. That doesn't necessarily mean you're Olympia material anymore. Well, I mean, you know, it could have been luck of the draw on a win in your in before. Like, let's just say. Uh, it's a multiple show weekend and it's still winter you're in, but everybody goes to one city mm -hmm. and, and somebody lucks up and they're in and they lucked up. So regardless, I think it's going to be on both sides. Like, you know, if you take the point side, then people will complain that, oh, you know, I got to do all of these shows and, and they'll complain. If you take the, uh, you know, side of winning you're in, then, oh, well, you just won and then now you're in. So what is the medium? Where, where do you, you know, uh, draw the line in the sand? Because either way, you, there's a complaint. That's the question, George. <laughs> That's why it's a top. I, 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 think, I think it's real close. I, I understand the win and you're in. Uh, I can agree with the win and you're in. You know, you, you have to have won a show. Man, I mean, I'm, I like that, you know. Yeah. Which was cool, too, because, you know, it, it is what it is. But I'm just saying, me personally. Yeah. But but w w again, with the win and you're in, maybe do we look at things like how many people are at a show or how many shows are on one particular weekend? These would be the two two of the situations that would warrant maybe a lesser deserving athlete qualifying for the Olympia. But again, does that happen so rarely that it's not something to talk about? Or are we going to see this as a topic of discussion come six, seven, eight, nine months from now where this has happened too many times. And we all of a sudden see a list of five, six people who we look and go, wow, are these guys really Olympians? 
So yet to be seen, but something to keep your eye out on for. Yeah, they'll have a false sense for those people that you're talking about, uh, you know, that may get that, you know, win in. I can't knock them if they, they get in. They want a show. And it's not easy to win a show, you know. So if they got the win, I got to tip my hat and say, hey, you got the win. But if you are still a person that's building, you know, whatever, go ahead and take the Olympia uh, trip. But just don't go in there, you know, like you're, uh, <laughs> you know, Johnny Bravo, uh, because you're not, you're not proven, you know. So. Oh man. Oh fuck. You didn't even have to listen. I was gonna just make a joke and keep right on rolling. Damn. You know? Cool. So. Speaking of, uh, you know, the ending of this season and the beginning of next season, uh, how important is the offseason as it reflects to the competition season? You know, uh, me personally, I've gotten better uh, as I've competed in my offseason, and uh, it makes the competition season that much easier. It makes the prep that much easier. That's something I had to learn, you know. Um, when you when you come in, for me, when I came in, it was like, all right, well, you know, you do shows and then you go into your off season and you pretty much just eat. It's not like people weren't telling me to eat. It was just like you kind of eat what you want. Um, I had to learn to have a detailed plan all the way through um, through the off season so I could continue to improve and get better, you know, as the next season came. Um, but I think it's detrimental to have a plan all the way through to try to eat as clean as possible and eat according to your goals. Um, and it makes it just the stress of the prep, everything, because you know you're in shape. You don't have to burn all that fat. And I think it's, like I said, I think it's detrimental that, you know, you take your offseason very serious and just not go pig out because you're spinning your wheels for the first couple of weeks. The offseason is every bit as important as competition season. The, the the day and the age of guys getting a pro card and then, you know, just competing, you, you know, show after show for multiple years and getting a little bit better and drier and tighter and harder are over. There's a there's a discrepancy now. You the, the guys at the very top of this league in your division and the guys that are turning pro, there's a large disparity now as opposed to years back. You could pretty much jump in and within a year or two, you know, based on your genetics and how much working out you did in the past, you, you could do pretty well. Now it's very far and few between. There's there's far more size. There's far more shape. Uh, there's far more development in certain body parts. So if you don't have a, a rhyme and a reason and a schedule to what you're doing, you're you're going to find yourself way behind. Not to mention the fact that so many guys have have good genetics that you have to put a, a an approach, a systematic approach to balancing and and balance and symmetry for the physique now. Um, if you don't, you're gonna beat average guys, but you're certainly not gonna win a show, and you're certainly not gonna be in that upper echelon. So. Uh, an off season is vital, just like it is in every other sport. I think it's the people that take advantage of it that benefit the most, and, and you see it in other sports. And it's just the experience. I told you that was for me. Um, so when somebody, you know, that you know, you get young guys and they talk to smack or whatever, it's just like I can tell you everything to do, but you still got to go out and do it. Right. And I think you only learn that through the years, through experience. Like, look, man, this year I ain't about to waste my time, you know, and then you do it and then you realize the benefit of it, you know, and you only get better and better. And so that'll give you uh, put yourself in a position to stay at that that top level for a long time, because some people never get it. Yeah, there there, there, there seems to be a in a massive difference in what some people consider an offseason. If you talk to an average bodybuilder, he's looking at nothing less than six months. And usually it's somewhere around eight, nine months to a year. That's an off season. You talk to a, a, a typical men's physique guy, he's taking January, February, maybe March, and he's back into prep. 60 days is not an off season, gentlemen. 90 days is not an off season. It's part of an off season, 
but that's not really an off season. <laughs> you haven't had enough time to put on very much tissue in very many places. So uh, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother subject and uh, for another day. But good one too, because you have absolutely. But off season is vital, and that's what you'll you'll notice most of the time. The guys who put in the time and the effort and have structured programs, you see them come back, and you go, whoa. Wow, that's a whole new physique. You're able to move up a tier as opposed to you're still battling the same guys you were battling in the past. You're just a little bit better. That doesn't take you where you need to go. All right, cool, man. That was some pretty good topics. Uh, I think we, you know, answered them pretty good. Nobody wants to hear us talk, though. So let's bring on our guests right after we pay these bills. We got a special guest coming up. You guys, stay tuned. Can't wait. Back, ladies and gentlemen, with the one and only Stan Morrison, aka Fetty Mo. Fetty, man, it took us forever to get on here, man. I didn't. I've been doing. I don't know how many shows, and this was a rough one. But fresh off the Titans Grand Prix win, I know you said you got something up coming in the future, man. How you feel? I feel good, man. Uh, you know, I can't complain about you know what the future holds for me. You know what I mean? We're making a lot of progress. Uh, took a long off season, so, and I can't wait to compete in the next couple of weeks. Take us back to uh, the Arnold. That was your last show. Yeah. Um, and I remember you saying you was going to take the year off. You know, tell us about that time period and how you benefited from that. Um, so yeah, my my whole idea was to see where I placed at when I went to the Arnold. And seventh place is a is a real good place. But I like to think that you know if I wanted to be a top five or an Olympian that, um, you know, I need to do better than set, set seven place. There's a people I need to stand next to in order to achieve that goal. And I didn't. Um, one second. All right. Yeah. And I didn't achieve that. So what I did was, you know, I did get the first call outs and I did get some pictures of those guys next to those guys. And I seen some things that I need to work on. So what I told myself was I wasn't going to make that run to the Olympia. I was going to actually rest. Uh, work on my business and for the most uh, for the better of me um, just keep grinding hard to improve myself and uh, pick a later show after the Olympia and that's when I chose to do the, the Titans Grand Prix um, and I told myself depending on how I come I and honestly um, it, I wasn't shooting for a win I wanted to win obviously but my ultimate goal was to bring a way better package than I've ever brought before and um, um, I think I achieved that in the, you know, seven, eight months uh, off season up until that show. So uh, now, you know, I'm going to try to see if I can make that make that run. Um, you know, I competed, I competed in, uh, the, at the Legions against uh, the number three. So that's going to give me, you know, a good idea of where I actually stand. And then, you know, after that, you know, I just kind of make a decision on what's going to happen. I'm actually impressed with your answer, dude. You're you're hitting it dead on the nail. Man, let's take it away. You know, it's exactly what we just talked about. We just had a conversation right before break, uh, uh, right before the break to bring you on was the importance of the off season and, and how it how it reflects on what you're going to look like on stage. And I said, I think too often, especially in the men's physique division, Guys think two or three months is an off season. That's not an off season. No, it's not. You, so you took seven and a half to eight months to get back on stage. And 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 we're talking about, like you said, you play seventh at the Arnold. Most people just keep the train rolling along. Wouldn't have got wouldn't have done very much for them. Cause seventh or eighth at the Arnold means you're just outside the top ten at the Olympia. Exactly. And that wasn't good enough for you. Well, congratulations. You're going to the O. You obviously are, 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 are well thought out, but you're also looking at the big picture. Um, now you're talking about the Legion here, and, and you want to stand next to someone who just finished third. It, it, was that another part of the thought process to, to hit these fall shows, not only get your qualification, 
but but see what you would be like standing next to possibly one or two of these guys who we know in the past have done those shows to qualify for the Olympia. Was that all part of the thought process? No, it wasn't. Um, um, I think about about uh, two weeks before the show, I started to get the idea that he may be competing at that show. Only reason I was going to compete at the Legions uh, is because it was about four weeks away, and I was like, you know, why not? You know, if I'm if if I'm already you know pretty much show ready four weeks before the show, why not go ahead and just cruise into the next one, you know, and 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 compete there? But then once I you know heard that he was competing there, it just kind of lit that fire a little bit more. So it just kind of made this a little bit more um, enthusiastic for me, you know. Well, and it it it's one of the best shows in the world. Chris Minnis puts on an unbelievable show. We we were there covering the show last year. We're going to be there again this year. When we were there covering that show, I could not believe everything that these athletes were getting. Uh, no, I mean, no. Bags full of, 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 of supplements, track suits. I mean, it was, yeah, it definitely was took everything care of us. you could dream of. Yeah. Uh, so he puts on a fantastic show, and it doesn't hurt that Maximum Muscle Report and, of course, NPC News Online will be out there giving you wall-to-wall coverage. So uh, that never hurts a, a, an athlete's brand either. Right. Athlete's brand, Fetty Mo, the Rat King. <laughs> you see, he got the stringer on. He ain't letting us. He gonna make sure. Uh, hey, I'm in the house chill. Hey, I, I'm used it without a shirt. You know, I'm keeping it yeah, going right yeah, now. You know. Yeah. Tell us so, just about your, your you know, you, you're young and up and coming, definitely. Um, what's the most, uh, what's the best lesson you've learned, you know, through your, you know, right now, your your, your career? My, the best lesson I've learned is, you know, I always tell people to expect not to expect. You know, everybody wants to win, obviously. You know, no, I, I assume nobody, you know, prep 16 weeks, you know, no ice cream, no pizza, all this cardio just to go on stage and get whatever. I think everybody's expectations is to win. But I think people's expectations are so high that when they lose, they feel like the world is down on them. You know, their, their, their fans don't like them or whatever the case may be. So I like to go into the shows expecting, you know, uh, to, to get to, to pretty much, you know, get what I get, you know what I mean? That way I'm not hurt about my where I stand. And to take, um, you know, be grateful for what for what I achieved and, and try to be better, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, 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 your, it's your way of having a professional mindset. That's what it is. Yeah. So it, it, you're out in that, that San Diego area. Uh, uh, Pete. Right, Sone is is your coach. What do you guys? You guys are six one nine muscle, I believe. Is that yeah. is that the moniker? Uh, you, that that crew's been around for a long, long time. Good group of people, old school mentality. Tell us a little bit about what it's like um, being a part of now going to the Olympia, but not being a part of if you're going to call it the big three. Now it seems like everyone either jumps to underground athletes or Team Ventura or or uh, zero, gravity. zero gravity. And if you're not with one of those three coaches, oh my God, you're probably not going to make it. Well, we know that's that's a bunch of crap. Right. Uh, you just proved it. You proved it with a group that has been around for a long time. Are you training out of the gym? It used yeah. to be the World Gym. So you've got. Eddie Brockmani out there, Sergio Oliva Jr. out there training out of the same gym. Tell us a little bit about what that culture is like out there and how it feels to represent your crew, your city, your squad going to the Olympia and not being a part of the big three, not jumping on a bandwagon. Um, you know, I remember when I first uh, started working with Pete, a lot of people was always telling me, hey, bro, you should go over here, you should go over here, you know, because of politics, this and that, and the third. And it used to bother me because everybody used to tell me if I wanted to win, I have to be on this team. So that's when I came up with this idea, undeniable physique, because I feel like I don't care who you are. If you step on the stage and you're fully undeniable, you're going to win. You can't tell me somebody paid a judge 
or they paying the show or whatever they doing in order to have a political stand uh, a standby that their people are going to win over someone who's totally undeniable. And uh, so that's what made me really want to stick with my coach and my team because I, I told myself I really want to prove to people that it's not political. Yeah, it may be a little. I mean, if you got two people up there that look identical, you can't choose, I mean, who's prettier, whose eyelashes are longer. It has to come down to some kind of political reason. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like, oh, that's Team Zero Gravity. We don't know who that is. We're going to pick Team Zero Gravity. It's not like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, well, 100%. 100%. 100% it, I, it, and it bothers me a lot that people always talk about politics. And it's like, no, there's no politics. Um, um, as far as, you know, my environment where I'm training, man, it's so much energy. Um, I'm, I, I used to be in the military a couple of years ago. And when I very first stepped into, I used to train on the base gym. And I was like the biggest guy there, you know. And when I went to World's Gym, it kind of opened me up. I was a little mm -hmm. scared and intimidated, but I didn't know why until I actually got in there and started realizing that it's because these people are really on their shit. And, uh, you know, I, I told myself I had to drive that extra 20 minutes to go to that gym to keep that fire lit. In order well to worth it. You know, it's well, well worth it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a big game changer, you know, if you really want to start competing, you know? I was out there last year visiting Sergio. I will we'll be out there again this year for the San Diego show and then spending some time. So I, I'm sure we'll catch up uh, when we're out there as, as well as at that gym. Fantastic location besides the weather. Wow. The amount of top level competitors and all the equipment you guys got in there. You don't need for anything. Mm -mm. Nope. All right, so you uh, qualify for Olympia. And we know you're going to do this next show. Uh, what are your plans after that? Because you're definitely well thought out. Like, you you have a plan, and we always talk about that. It's just not, you know, uh, a, a one uh, one show, one trick pony, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, you're gathering data. That's what I'm picking up, you know. So, like, definitely you're strategic, and it's definitely going to lead to more success. Uh, what do you got in the future after that? Um, so, ultimately... What I really, really would like to do is chill after the legions. Um, but um, I really want to compete over there on the East Coast again. You know, I want to do the Arnold again, and I'm really thinking about doing New York Pro. But also, I really want to take, if I'm going to really compete in the Olympia, I really want to take that long break again to develop a little bit more on my backside and compete and, and, and be, you know, more competitive in the Olympia, because I feel like the shows are just going to kind of slow down my my progress of, of growing. Um, and, and but it, it's I'm leaning more to, to, to definitely go into the Arnold if I can, you know, they can if they accept me again. And then maybe the New York Pro, maybe because I really need to, you know, compete over there on the East, East Coast. Now, it, when you say this, is this. Is this strategy and game plan all something that you do on your own? Is it something that Pete does for you? Is it something you guys do together? Yeah, something that we do together. We kind of, you know, talk about it. He usually go with what I say, but if 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 it's not right, then he'll be like, "Hey, this is what I suggest." But it's for the most part then it's your strategy with 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 kicking it over to him to see what what his thoughts are. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Because I like, I would like to stand next to those guys a little bit more before I get to the Olympia. You know, that's how I kind of gauge myself based off of, you know, what I need to do. All right, where'd the nickname come from? With Fetty Mo. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a big, big gambler, man, real big gambler. So Mo, my last name is Morrison. I was in the military, and just like any average, uh, any uh, average, well, any other human being, we don't like to use so many syllables. And so everybody, instead of calling me Morrison, they would call me Mo. And Fetty came from the term confetti. The, in Urban Dictionary, confetti means throwing money. So people started calling me Fetty Mo because I played, I would gamble so much, but I spelled it the way I wanted to spell it, which is F-E-D-D-Y. And that just been, that's been with me for like 10, 11 years now. So yeah, it's basically Money Mo, it just came from me gambling so much. What, what, what's your favorite action? What's that? What you mean? Well, you play the ponies. You're a football guy. Where 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 does your action go? Oh. 
Oh, football, sure. Football all day, college or professional? Uh, professional. Okay, all right, there you have it. That That's what I wanted to know more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, uh, you already know continued success, man. Anybody want to shout out real quick? Uh, yeah, man, I want to shout out, you know, my coach, uh, Team 619 Muscle, uh, my own team, Undeniable Physique. Of course, the, my, uh, one of my biggest sponsors and uh, biggest support, Jim Molly. Uh, you know, all the people that support me. You know, I, I don't really like to call them fans, but, you know, that's just kind of what it is. You know what I mean? It's people that I, really, I like the people that uh, support me. They've been there since day one. And, uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much it. One question. Where's the dog? Dog. Hey, hurt. What to say? Come on, man. This dog is world famous, man. You gotta. You fading the dog. You took all the time. The dog can't get the shine. Yo, he came up yeah. too. He heard the phone ring. He was like, "Yo, put me on." Come here, uh, yeah. Come here boy. He gonna take us home. The Rat King, ladies and gentlemen. He he definitely. Uh, he basically hit the head on. Head on the head. <laughs> That dog is world famous right there. Yo. Yeah, uh, a lot no. of times we talked about being strategical, you know, gathering data, having a plan. He hit everything on, on the nail, and that's why he's in the position that he's in, you know. So continue success. Um, I'll see you. I'll definitely be at that show covering. Um, hopefully I'll be doing your interview in the winter circle. Appreciate it. Man, does she got anything? That's it. I, I, this is no surprise. Uh, after, seeing, after seeing this young man at the Olympia – and having a little bit of a conversation with him and and listening to him here today and, and the game plan, why he took the time, how they make their decisions, what he's looking for, move, looking to be doing moving forward. I, I'm not, not only am I not surprised that he's now going to the Olympia, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're, if we're talking about him being a, a top 10 Olympia this coming year. Wish you nothing but the best of luck and just keep doing your thing, man. Appreciate that. Absolutely. All right, I see you, man. We can we can eat something together. All right, good job, good job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Stan Morrison, aka Money Mo. Man, this buckle and myself for the King's Court. Long live. See you next time. Word.